Hey folks, what's up? It's Dan Bader here. Let's talk about how you can become a speaker at a tech conference. Um, because I uh, I went to PyCon Germany um, uh, a while ago, and um, I actually gave a presentation there. So I was a speaker. And so uh, a couple of people have reached out to me after that um, and asked me about, you know, how do you actually become a speaker at a tech conference? Because that seems like that seems like, you know, a really fun thing and and a really good thing to do for your career and to kind of, you know, just make yourself more known. And and I totally agree with that. Um, a, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, too. But uh, it's totally worth it. It's great for getting in touch with people, making new connections, you know, potentially finding a new job or a better job. And uh, I would absolutely encourage you to go for it. So coming back to the question, how do you actually become a speaker so you can get the famed, you know, speaker uh, tag on your badge. Um, not that that would matter. You know, it's actually not a big deal. So, um, okay, so you do become a speaker at a larger conference essentially by applying to be a speaker there, right? Like very rarely are conferences going to seek you out if you're not well known as a speaker. I mean, if, you know, that, like, uh, it, it happens to people who are, you know, that might happen to people who are super well-known, who have published, you know, really well-known books. Uh, these people will be contacted and people will actually be seeking them out actively. But if you're if you're a guy like me or you, you just want to speak at a tech conference, you have to do all the legwork and essentially like pitch your topic to see if you can get in. And the way it works is that, okay, so these conferences... Um, they work on a schedule, right? So let's say the conference will be um, in uh, in September one year, and uh, these people they need to lock down um, or like lock in all the speakers they have for the conference, probably like in late summer or maybe even before that, depending on how the conference is organized. This is usually how it works. So the most important thing I would say is you got to be early enough to actually be able to pitch your talk. You know, you need to know about the conference early enough to be able to pitch your talk so you can even have a chance to have it, you know, reviewed and and uh, have a chance for it to be accepted so you can speak at the conference. So uh, definitely know, you know, when the conference is uh, asking for proposals or they call it a call for proposals where you can submit um, a talk proposal and then usually the organizers of the conference they will vote on that proposal and then the people who get accepted as speakers they're basically in and then it's all about well putting together the actual talk and then going there and giving the talk so really the critical thing and this is where a lot of people kind of miss out on this is that you need to be early enough to get your proposal in so if you want to speak you know at a conference and let's say six months from now it's probably a good idea to get started um like right now or really really soon right start looking for conferences that interest you and for example if you want to speak at a python conference then um you could just search for Python conference on Google or find the Python event calendar. And I'm going to link that in the description um, where it lists uh, all of the upcoming Python events. And you just pick something that's a couple of months out at least. Look on their site. They will all have like web pages for the conference. A look there and find out when the call for proposals is. Now, once you know that, you will know the deadline when you need to submit your talk. And this is where it becomes um, more interesting because now you actually, you know, you need to start working on your talk. So usually what this looks like, depending on how well the conference is organized, like maybe they have some kind of form that you need to fill out, like a web form you need to fill out and they kind of walk you through what you need to fill in. Or you can just send them, um, you know, some kind of pitch like an email or a PDF asking to accept you as a speaker. Or sometimes uh, people actually ask you to create a pull request for the conference repository so people can review it there. And now, however you submit that actual information, um, you wanna make sure you cover some key things to go into that proposal because uh, that having like a nice proposal will really, really inc increase your uh, chances of actually getting your talk accepted. So the structure that I use, um, and I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can grab um, just my proposal template and then use that, you know, for your own uh, proposal. So the structure I use 
well, of course I put the talk title, try and have some kind of catchy title that um, actually looks like people would be interested um, in, in watching that talk. So I uh, put the talk title. I always put the intended audience level. You know, you might say something like, this is for beginning Python developers. This is for intermediate JavaScript developers. This is for advanced web developers. Just something like that to give people an, um, an idea of what audience you have in mind. And then that also shows that you're thinking about this stuff. You know, 80% of the people who are submitting talks, they're not thinking about this stuff. They're not thinking about, okay, how could I benefit the audience? How could I benefit the organizers? So by putting stuff like that, like the intended audience, you're actually showing that you care about your audience, right? When you're speaking, you just, you don't want to go out there and just talk about stuff that you care about. And you're the only person who cares about that, right? So it, it always helps to have that reflected in the proposal. Then I would have a, a brief description, you know, just around 400 characters, like a very short, like a one, two sentence uh, description that people could quickly get an idea of what your talk is about, which also forces you, you know, yourself to, to think about what your talk is really about. What's the core idea? You know, I would call that the brief description or core, um, core idea of the talk. And then I would give um, like, a proper abstract or some kind of summary that is not just a high level teaser, but um, sort of a brief, you know, TLDR, like too long, didn't read kind of summary. You know, what's going to be, what's the talk going to be about? What's going to be the introduction to the talk, kind of the progression and then the payoff at the end. And this could be, you know, a couple of paragraphs. Don't go super long, shorter is usually better. And just try and like lay out that story that you're sharing in the talk. And, you know, you could even like ask yourself, uh, what's the question this talk will actually answer? What's, you know, why is this critical information for someone who's, who's watching your talk? Um, why, why do they, why should they care about this? Why is this a problem? Um, because it really helps you put you in this mindset of where you want to produce this talk for the people who really care about this stuff and who are actually interested in this. Um, and then um, I, I always close uh, a proposal with a brief about me section. And this is where you put in stuff that um, kind of shows what you are about and what your background is. And you want to show people, you know, it's, you want to give some indicators of why you're not going to embarrass the organizers if they decide to bring you in, right? That's kind of the angle I try and write this under. So for example, people are worried about bringing in super boring speakers. So if you have proof that um, you're, you're going to be an engaging speaker who's not going to bore the audience to death. And, you know, I started out as a boring speaker and I feel like I, you know, I probably still am, but I've gotten better. So there's, there's ways to grow that skill. But basically, what you know, I'm not trying to like discourage you, but I want to encourage you to share this information if you have proof, you know, that 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 would point out that you can be a good uh, good thing. It would be a good thing to bring you on a speaker. For example, if you have a YouTube channel, you know, kind of like I'm sitting here talking to the camera, someone could look at that and be like, yeah, okay, I would hire this guy to be a speaker, bring him on as a speaker. It could also, be, it could also go the other way and someone could go, um, you know, what is this super boring? I, I don't care. You could get rejected for that. But it really, you know, it gives people a sneak preview of what you're going to be about, what you're going to be like as a speaker. If you have a blog, if you have a website, absolutely point people to your blog because they're gonna learn what you're about and what your skills are and why you know why you're what do you have to say about this topic right like what what is your expertise in this in this topic in this area so definitely put a link to that um, put a link to twitter and people if you're using twitter you know people can see that you're engaging with people and sharing stuff and they can just get a feel for you um, always put your contact information and if you have previous speaking, um, previous speaking experience, always put that in there as well, right? Like, um, you know, I, you might just give a quick list of uh, conferences you've spoken at before or meetups you've spoken at before. And this is kind of what, what I would put into a conference talk proposal. Now, and, and I'm going to come to this and talk about this in another video. Um, if this sounds like too much work, then there's also an easier route where you're not trying to get into, you know, a proper like full-on tech conference like PyCon 
but you're trying to speak, or maybe you'll speak at a meetup uh, first, right? This is how I got started, like speaking at meetups and giving presentations in these in these other events just to kind of build up my my credibility as a speaker and my skill as a speaker. So this was kind of the rundown of how you actually submit a talk and, and what would go into that proposal. But uh, stay tuned for another video where I talk about kind of ways you can get started with this um, easier. You know, try and you know, go for it, absolutely submit talks and write proposals and, and try to get in. If you can do that, great. Yeah, I think you have a great chance of getting in actually. Um, if you put like put in a proper pr proposal, there's a big chance you will actually get in. But um, if that sounds a little bit too scary, then check out this other video that I'm probably also gonna link at some point here now in the video and check that out and I'll, I'll speak a little bit about that 